This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Missy Fuller. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Welcome to KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. I'm Missy Culler. Today is Wednesday, June 16th. Well, a Las Vegas man trying to retrieve an item of clothing that blew out of his vehicle is struck and killed on U.S. Highway 6 in Esmeralda County. Nevada Highway Patrol says 70-year-old Henry Thomas McGrady Jr. of Las Vegas died Thursday, June 10th when he was struck by a vehicle on US-6 about 15 miles west of Tonopah. NHP's preliminary investigation has determined that a van was traveling west on US-6 when the driver observed Grady in the travel lane. The driver steered to the right to avoid him, but McGrady ran in the same direction. Investigators say the van driver then steered to the left, at which time McGrady also changed his direction and ran into the path of the van where he was struck. NHP says McGrady was trying to retrieve an article of clothing that had flown out of his vehicle, which was located near the scene. If you witness the crash or have any information regarding what happened, you are asked to contact the Nevada Highway Patrol Elko office. Threatening letters mailed to a county official lead to one man's arrest. The Nye County Sheriff's Department was investigating a report of threatening letters sent via certified mail to the Nye County Planning Department in Pahrump. The addresses the letters were sent from was the residence of Joseph Sakela. According to the declaration of arrest, when deputies made contact with Sakela, they learned that he had sent two separate letters via certified mail to the Nye County Planning Department Code and Compliance Services. The second letter Sakela sent stated that he will defend his property, land, life, and liberty to death if they continue to keep attacking their family. He will find them and their family and anyone who has helped along in the process. The Nye County Director of Planning Code and Compliance had previously stated that he wanted to press charges because because he did fear that Sakela would follow through with threats against him and or his employees. Deputies arrested Joseph Sakela for intimidating public officers. He was booked at Nye County Detention Center. And the Nye County Sheriff's Office snag unit arrested a man after an email is sent to, uh, to the Sex Offender Registration Division. The Nye County Sheriff's Office snag unit was forwarded an email from an individual who had originally contacted the Sex Offender Registration Division of the Nevada Department of Public Safety. The email requested assistance regarding an offender trying to use his address and did not reside there. The offender was later identified as Matrix Lee Walker, known to law enforcement from multiple encounters. The reporting party's email stated that Walker did not live at the residence. Walker allegedly informed him that he had better do what he says or he would cause violence. The reporting party said that Walker allegedly left a gallon of gasoline, a stick, and a lighter in the front door of his residence. He also said that he had several text messages from Walker threatening violence. He further advised that he had returned home to find Walker blocking access to his garage and doorway with the threat of a gun. When officers made contact with the reporting party, they observed a ladder barricading the door. The victim said that this was to protect him from Walker breaking into his home. The victim said that he had had a physical altercation with Walker. Walker had a female with him whom he reportedly told to grab the gun and load it. The victim stated he feared for his life as he saw the female grab the gun. The victim said he sprayed Walker with a can of bear spray as he was attempting to grab the gun. The victim said that Walker did not live at the residence, but he allowed him to stay there for a few nights. He said he had seen Walker with a firearm and heroin. Walker wanted the victim to allow him to use his address to register as a sex offender with the state of Nevada. Officers were able to corroborate the victim's statements with a neighbor that witnessed the altercation. When officers made contact with Walker, he allegedly denied the statements given by the victim, but did confirm that there was a physical altercation. Because of corroborating statements, Matrix Walker was arrested for failure to register as a sex offender and coercion with force or threat of a deadly weapon. A Pahrump rental equipment yard has an issue today, losing their trailer and load on the roadway. And Monday at Mance Road, a rent-to-go driver says that the diesel trailer disconnected from the cab on the residential street, spilling not only a huge load of dirt, but lots of hydraulic fluid. This caused the closure of the roadway for several hours this morning and afternoon. This occurred after Nye County units responded to a report of a power outage on Money Street after a vehicle struck a power pole and fled the scene. 63 Valley Electric members were out for several hours until crews replaced that pole. If you have any information regarding the hit-and-run driver, 
you can call NCSO at 775-751-7000. And we'll be right back with more News 25. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back. Well, producer prices post the fastest rise on record, retail sales slip, and the new CEO of Lordstown Motors assures investors the company is on track to produce its electric pickup. Topping our news, it's all about inflation today. As of May, producer prices are up 6.6% for the past 12 months. That is the fastest rise on record. Americans are paying more as prices inflate on food, gas, and metals, aluminum used in cars and trucks that is heating up quickly in price. Retail sales fell in May. The 1.3% drop is blamed on a downshift of auto sales as Americans spend more money taking vacations and on services they skipped during the pandemic. Rents are on the rise. The rent gains were highest in Phoenix. The new chairwoman of Lordstown Motor says the electric truck maker is on track to begin limited production of its endurance electric pickups by late September. Yesterday, the CEO and CFO resigned from Lordstown. When the CDC updated mask wearing guidelines in May, Nye County also updated the policy for the public, but not for employees and elected officials on town and country property. At the June 15th BOCC meeting, County Manager Tim Sutton rectified that by proposing a mask policy change. So um, a few, oh gosh, I think it was a few months ago um, after the CDC changed its guidelines and the state issued its corresponding changes, um, we went ahead and put out a, pub a policy by the, uh, f pertaining to the public regarding face coverings. Um, I did that under my authority uh, as building administrator. Um, I didn't hear any pushback. I think every, all of you were, were satisfied with that. Um, I was informed that that policy did not apply to, the, um, to employees and to elected officials. If it had just been uh, pertaining to employees, I would have been able to pass this, but since it applies to elected officials as well who um, have the same rules and guidelines as employees, I uh, thought it best to bring it before this board. So what you have in front of you is uh, the, best, um, the best, we took a stab at it uh, in consultation with the DA's office. Um, so that's uh, the policy, the proposed policy that you have before you. If there are any parts of it that you uh, disagree with, feel free to uh, propose amendments. And if that's something, um, if there's something in there that you don't like, then make the motion and that way we can have something for um, pertaining to employees and staff. The commissioners took the proposed policy, did a little wordsmithing, and came up with the final product. It'll state under elected officials and employees claiming medical exemptions, it'll state Elected officials and employees claiming a medical exemption are not required to wear a face mask, period. We will not be asking details about or requiring proof of medical conditions, period. Next subsection says vaccinated elected officials and employees. Fully vaccinated elected officials and employees may enter into town or county buildings without a face mask or face shield, period. Notwithstanding the above, any elected official or employee may or may not continue to wear masks or face coverings to protect themselves and others. A quick check with legal. What do you think? The DA's office is fine with your motion. And finally, a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Or is aye? Everybody aye? Aye. That motion carries 5-0. And the new policy will take effect immediately. Thanks so much, Missy. Well, the Board of County Commissioners recently approved a Nye County proclamation that will recognize October 3rd of this year as Seroptimus International Prompt Valley Day here in Nye County. A prompt member of the Global Volunteer Organization was at the meeting to tell the board a bit about what they do here in our community. Hi, my name is Dina Williamson Urday. I am a member of um, Seroptimus International Pahrump Valley. I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Strickland for sponsoring this agenda item. Um, I wanted to explain that the date we chose, October 3rd, 2021, is the date of the centennial um, anniversary of Seroptimus International, which has members throughout the world, every uh, country and nation uh, throughout the world is represented through Seroptimus. 
We're a uh, women's organization that uh, provides um, uh, service and support for women. So our, our motto is best for women. And we recently awarded a local resident, um, a woman who was doing continuing education and um, was the primary support of her family. And we awarded her with a thousand dollar award so that she can use that to support her family or use it for her education. We also recently awarded $500 to a high school senior for um, her um, college uh, education. So we, we have health fairs for women, so we do a lot for women, and we'd like to thank you for recognizing us. And we'll be right back with more News 25. Stay close. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back. The Knight County Department of Health and Human Services provides a vast number of resources for local residents. To help spread the word, the department held drive through social service fairs Thursday in Pahrump and in Tonopah. Community health nurse Crystal Kennedy says it's important that people know about the health and wellness services that are available to them. We are handing out bags that are uh, filled with resources that the community may not be aware that we have. In specifically regarding the community health nursing, um, I have a flyer that's in English and in Spanish that goes over all the things that we do at the office. And specifically, I wanted to point out, we do STD testing, birth control, family planning. We can do hemoglobin checks. We can also help families get their children caught up on their vaccines. Our focus this summer is going to be helping them get ready for back to school. And we're also getting ready to actually host a back to school fair in Harump, Beatty, and Amargosa as well. And so it's been a really fun adventure just teaming up with everybody in the community, specifically um, Night Communities Coalition and Immunize Nevada. They've been really instrumental in helping us get the word out that we're doing COVID vaccines. Currently, we're doing COVID pods, so that means it's completely free to the public every single week on Wednesdays. And if it doesn't work for them to come in on a Wednesday, you can just give us a call at the office and we can arrange to help you get vaccinated. The biggest hurdle I'm having with being new and us, this town not having a nurse for so long, is that people who need birth control or STD testing or getting their kids immunized, they didn't know we were here. And so I'm really just trying to get the word out. I'm hoping word of mouth and then, you know, doing things like this will help them know that we're here and we can bring services to this community that were not available before I got here. We are on the Calvada I, so uh, 1981 East Calvada Suite 100. So we're in the same building as Health and Human Services and the same office as WIC. So when you're passing, when you're going down Calvada, you're going to pass Dr. Leakes in the podiatry, and we're on the left, right past the construction building. Well, the circus is back in town in Pahrump this weekend. Cirque Legacy will perform more than a dozen shows under the big top at Petrick Park starting tomorrow night. Daniel Perez tells News 25 the Animal Free Show offers fun and excitement for the whole family. The name of the circus that you see in the letters over there is a uh, it's a Cirque Legacy. Uh -huh. uh, that name comes from my uh, family generations. So mm -hmm. I try to bring to the town the legacy of my, my family. I'm yeah. um, the fifth generation of the circus performers. Would you guys expect to have a good show? This is not, I think the biggest show that you ever have in circus in this town. We have clowns, jugglers, hula hoops, uh, um, hand balancers, flying. Uh, well, a lot of, a lot of fun um, act, so you expect it to have a good show. We don't have animals. I never have an animal in my shows in the ten, 10 years that I do my shows. I'm focused more on like a new new style show, new new generation, you know. Animals, uh, unfortunately, is no more on the business and uh, for, a good, well, for a good thing, you know. So we try to substitute animals from a human being performing on stage. So that way we, we try to impress the other humans so to see how you can do with your body. The tickets are all the way from $10 for a kid under 12 years old to uh, top to 40. It's depending on the location. So we have three different locations. It's a VIP in just in front of the stage. It's a uh, general that is in the, all the way in the back and it's a preference that's in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it's a 20, 30 and 40. It's very affordable. If you missed that information, of course, it's on our local Prompt Facebook page. You can purchase tickets for Cirque Legacy by going to their website, CirqueLegacy.com. You can even go on to Eventbrite, and tickets are also available out the door. 
This summer, in some parts of the country, cicadas will reappear after 17 years underground. There's plenty of buzz about inviting these creepy crawlers to dinner as the main course. And it turns out cicadas are edible. But if you decide to try them, Cleveland Clinic's dietitian Beth Cerrone says be mindful about where you harvest them. Remember, they've been in the ground for 17 years. So they have been able to absorb pesticides, lawn fertilizers, any other chemical that you would put on your lawn. Um, so maybe you don't necessarily want to eat them if that's something you normally would put in your backyard. Insects are commonly eaten by at least 2 billion people around the world. However, they're not embraced as a food source in most Western countries. Like other insects, cicadas are thought to be high in protein and low in fat and carbs. One study suggests they may be high in antioxidants too. Cicadas are considered crustaceans, so they're related to shellfish like shrimp and lobsters. Shellfish may aggravate gout a form of arthritis. So if you suffer from this condition, experts recommend avoiding eating cicadas. The same goes for people who have a food allergy to shellfish. They find it similar to shellfish. So if you are allergic to shellfish, it is recommended that you avoid eating cicadas. Some cicadas may also contain significant levels of mercury, according to one preliminary study. Mercury exposure can be harmful to an unborn or young child's nervous system, so experts advise pregnant women and young children to avoid eating these insects. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Hi, it's John Kohler, staring out the KPVM Weather Window with Bob Rood Community Center. They just opened up their doors for emergency AC help. If you need a place to cool down, uh, why don't you head on over there? We'll tell you about the weather coming back. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. What a day in uh, hot weather. Hot weather news? Yes, we've got it for you. Let's look at the uh, the weather all up and down the state. Look at this uh, Fernley Fallon, Carson City. Tonopah, you're also talking about 96, 97 degrees. Mm, Goldfield, there we're seeing the triple digits. It's 100 degrees. 110 in Beatty, 114 in Amargosa, 116 in Las Vegas. Good Lord, it's like an auction. Everything keeps going up. 125 in Death Valley, but here in the paradise of Pahrump, an entirely binary temperature. Currently 111 degrees. How about that? It was worse earlier. It was 114. Uh, winds just kissing us lightly out of the west southwest, eight miles per hour. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, the sun rose this morning at 5.25 a.m. It's going to set this evening with great colors. We've got partly cloudy skies tonight at about 8.03. It's going to just, the reds will really uh, pick up. Uh, the low tonight about 83 degrees. East, southeast, the winds continuing kindly at 7 miles per hour as we head on into the week. And what do we see? A whole bunch of more 111 degrees uh, for the next couple days. Wind's going to pick up about Saturday, going to blow away that cloud cover. And the temperatures are going to start coming down. The trend is your friend. Uh, I'll take 15 mile per hour average uh, winds versus 111 degrees if we get all the way down to 99 like it's looking like we will on Wednesday. So things to look forward to, things to plan for, and things to be grateful for. How about that? Uh, back to the desk. It's Missy and Deanna. Thanks so much, John. We do want to let everybody know that the cooling station will not be open tomorrow. It was only open until 5 p.m. Uh, this evening and uh, hopefully in the coming days we'll get that open back again if everything starts to go crazy like it really is right now which Valley Electric says there's a possibility of rolling outages tomorrow night. Yeah between 5 and 10 p.m. so prepare for that ahead of time make sure you've got all your computers and everything plugged into the right kind of power strips so you don't damage that equipment. Exactly that's super important. Well she's not only um, a first responder but she works for veterans and it is her birthday today and we have to say very very special happy birthday to one of our own. You see her, she's out there riding her horse in the McCullough Arena, but that is Jamie Lewis. And we want to say a very special happy 60th birthday to Jamie Lewis today. And yes, Scott did put us up to it. <laughs> and we, um, she's just a lovely person and happy birthday once again. She's over there working um, in the medical field now at the VA clinic here in Prump. We're so happy she was a former um, Mercy Air uh, nurse oh. and she's been giving back to the community for years. Happy birthday once again. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna. I'm Missy. Have a great night. Thanks for watching. Good night.